hey everyone welcome back to our channel in this quick video we would like to go through a small concept of debugging a c sharp application this is required and i have to record this session and keep it in between the open ai series the reason being many of the developers are picking up our implementation and trying to build on top of that but they lack the basic skill that is of debugging a dotnet application because either they are not the dotnet developers they come from a different background so that is the reason i am creating this video just for their understanding how you can debug a dotnet application and especially a api application so let's dive into we'll be covering how to debug a c sharp code as well as how to debug an api call that is made from your c sharp code and how to see what data has been retrieved from the api and then decide based on that data and take your decisions okay let's dive right into okay uh, in this session uh, we will have a very basic concept like how to debug a C sharp project using Visual Studio. And if at all that C sharp project is calling an API, how to debug that too? So, before starting, let me just load an existing project. And let me clone a repository. Okay, uh, let's pick up this project. On the right hand side, we see our solution explorer. So we need to open our solution file. Just double click on that. Okay, so under my solution OpenAI bot, I have one project OpenAI bot. And this is a typical web API project where we have some controllers. So my API will be running on this endpoint that is slash API slash messages. Uh, this project is a Microsoft bot framework. And I'm going to debug this project. Currently, I'm not touching any configuration just to show you how we can debug it. So if you see the configuration file, you have the OpenAI configuration where my API key is blank. So I'm not putting the API key now. So we will check it while debugging this one. So most of my API call has been done from this method that is completion handler. And this is the API call that is made to the open AI services. And this particular method has been called from here. Uh, let me increase the screen size. So the first rule, whenever your method is called from, from wherever your method is called from, and which has the issue, just put a breakpoint there where it is called from. And the second breakpoint, where you feel like it is having some issue. If you are not sure where exactly is the issue, then you can put everything inside the try-catch block. Currently, this piece of code is not inside the try catch block. Only the code where we are sending the request is in the try catch block. So you can also keep this inside try catch.
if you're absolutely sure that your code will never throw an exception, then you can put it outside. If you're not sure that your code is uh, will throw or not throw an exception, just put it inside try catch block. And inside catch, you're going to catch the exception that is being thrown. So exception means any exception that is happening will be handled. If you already know what type of exception that will be thrown, then you can put a name of that exception here. For example, if you think that, okay, my code might throw null reference exception, then you can catch that, or you can put one more catch block and just say, uh, my code will throw, let's see what all different types of exceptions are there. Argument exception, argument null exception, arithmetic exception, array type. So there are many types. If you're sure about what type of exception your code will throw, you can increase the performance of your code by putting just that exception name and catch tag. So always put a at the last catch block, always keep exception so that any other exception which you are not sure will be handled by this one. So now let's say I'm going to print my exception on the console. EX dot message. So my exception message will be part of this message. And if you want the stack trace, there is a method available for the stack trace as well. So currently we are only focusing on the message. Same way. Here also I will just. Hold it. OK. Now. Since my code is not returning value, let me return null on when the exception is thrown. OK. Another step. So the first place you put in a breakpoint from where your method has been called from. In the second place, just uh, to be sure that uh, exception can happen any place, just put it at the start of the method. Or if you're not sure where exception might happen, just, yeah, if you're not sure where exception might happen, just put it at the start. And also just put at the catch block. Because at the end of the day, if your code is inside try catch block, it will always come to this place. This is with regard to the C sharp code that you have written. Now, if you have, if you are calling an API from your C sharp code, the API might return some data that you do not want, and in that case, you might be returning null. So here you see I'm returning null because the API is not returning the data I expected to return. So I'll just return null. In that case, how do you check what is the value that is being returned by the API? This is specific to the C sharp. So I'm just, let me just remove this from here and put it here, okay. Why I did that? Because this particular statement will throw an exception if the status code is not success. What is the success status code? 200, 201. So these are the some of the success status code. And that is why I want to check what is the response of the API before checking the success status code. That is why I moved it below and I'm going to put a breakpoint here because this is the place where it will read my API response and it will store that API response in the response string variable. Okay, now let's start debugging. How to debug? You can click on this one or you can go to debug and click on start debugging or you can click on F5 as well. If 
if your application is typical web API, then you can test it on Postman since our application is web API plus what framework application? I'm just testing it on the emulator. I'm connecting it to the chat. OK, now let's say hi to the bot. So it has stopped here since we have put a breakpoint and it has stopped the, at the place where that method has been called from. On the top, you see many options in Visual Studio. This is called step into. This is called step over. If you click on step into, it will go step by step without skipping any methods. For example, you are calling a method here and you don't have any breakpoints here in the inside this method. OK. And if you step into. It will go inside this method and it will come here. If you click on step over. It will skip going inside your method and it will go to the next step that is line 34. So that is the reason step into it's going step by step step over. It will skip the method. If there is no breakpoint. Since I have my breakpoints here, if I click on step over, it will still come inside because I have my breakpoints here. Okay, so let's see. Step over. My again breakpoint is hit inside the completion handler method. Then since my statements are simple statements, it doesn't go to any other methods. I can either use step into or step over. It's up to me. So I'll just go step into. OK. And it is getting the configuration. Currently it has got the base address. Adding the headers. OK, now it is preparing the message body. You can see here on the left bottom, there's a window and you can see all the values assigned to your variables. So body is my variable where my JSON body has been assigned in a string format. So here you can see the value of that. OK, and now I am at the place where it will make the API call. So let's step into. And here you can see method post and status code is 401. So that's not success. Here it does not show me what exactly is the error message. Until now it only shows me the status code. With the status code you can analyze that okay, your request has failed, but you need more details about the status code and what exactly is the error that is written from the server. So that is why we read the content. What is being returned by the API? So we go next. Here is the response string. And here is the error message that is saved. So the actual error is you didn't provide an API key. You need to provide your API key in the authorization header header using peer or token. So this is my detailed error message. With this, you can find out what is the error on your API side. OK, now let's see how to find out what is the error on the. C sharp code side. OK, since uh, you see. Since I wrote that statement to ensure success status that got failed because it was accepting a success status code and my status code is 401 unauthorized. So it is come to the exception block. Why it is not going to the null reference? Because the exception of type is this one. This is my exception type. HTTP request exception. If at all I have one more catch block with the name HTTP request exception, it would have been executed that. OK, and here. It will come inside and let's see the message. Response status code does not indicate success. That was my C sharp error. Let us also see one more C sharp error. In this case, I'm going to remove. 
uh, this I'm going to comment this out. In this case, what will happen? My C sharp code will not find this property open AI. And let's see what type of exception it will throw. I'll start debugging again. I'll restart my conversation. Let's say hi. Yeah, one more feature. If you want to go directly to the your next breakpoint, you can always click on this continue. It will only stop at the next breakpoint. Now, if you want to skip all of these steps, you can click on continue and it will directly jump to this particular breakpoint. Okay. But uh, before that, only my exception will happen. So I'll just go step by step. So he it is trying to fetch the values from this JSON property open AI, but that property is not there because we commented it out. See, exception has been slow, and this time argument null exception. Value cannot be null. And let's see the message because that's the message only value cannot be null. See, value cannot be null parameter URI string. So it is also giving you uh, more details parameter URI string. So this URI we are generating and currently the value is getting null. OK. So that's uh, one way of debugging your C sharp code. And. Yeah, I think these are the ones. So we completed how we can debug our C sharp code plus how to debug an API call.